and we have joining us live Dr. Chika Omwama, who is the team lead, Nigeria Institute of Medical Research, to talk to us about this. Good to have you, Dr. Omwama. Thank you so very much. Pleased to be here. This is quite an interesting uh, piece of information. Now, tell us more about this landmark achievement. Is this something that, you know, has, has been discovered before COVID-19 outbreak or the pandemic is pivotal to this uh, breakthrough? Okay, so uh, most of the platforms we employed have always been there. It's just been able to adapt it. One of the key points was that because of the global shortages, everybody's going for the same kind of reagents. We are going for a different kind of reagents to be able to do this and not have issues with uh, um, having the supplies not queuing up. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give you an instance. I'm carrying this. This is the PCR instrument. Right. You have two of these you can test. This test 16. You have to do your test 32 at once. This has been in existence from a company in uh, Australia, but nobody has really used it. And it's powered, it can be powered by this very simple um, power pack. I'll mm -hmm. put my phone beside it for you to have a, a contrast. Right. It's very simple and very thin. So the, the point is something that can go to the field. So have this portable instrument, you can put it inside a box, you take it out to the field, and then you can test people. We, we are trying to make it go down as simple as possible. In the institute here, I, I'm in charge of the lab where we talk about, we give out the results for the COVID. Since April, no, no, since February, we have been testing for people. At some point, our staff will be so, we are so overwhelmed. Hmm. So we are thinking of, let's decentralize this thing. How far can it go? So that's where the idea of this came up with. And the good part of what we try to do with uh, Faith Foundation is that, apart from developing the assay, so we put together things to do the assay. Let's say um, um, maybe you want to make tea and we develop maybe the tea itself and then use commercial sugar and milk and all that. Right. So we put together everything. The other key part of it is also extraction. So we try to identify an extraction machine that will also work with us even in the local areas. So we brought an extraction machine that we uh, I've used when I, I work with the Chinese CDC and something like 32 kg, it can go to, it's very portable, you can carry it to the field mm -hmm. and the instrument can they extract 32 at once and you test on this. In an hour, you have results for 32 people. Excellent. So that's why we are coupling them. It's not as if all of them are for us. The main PCR uh, molecular test is what we developed, mm -hmm. the assay we put together. But we are putting everything together so that we, we have a system that can go to the field. And then you can test at public health centers, general hospitals, different places, and anyone can be trained, Try to make it as simple as possible that anyone can be able to perform it. Mm. We appreciate also the demonstration, you know, that you did uh, during this conversation. Uh, meanwhile, tell us again more about the strands of COVID the test kits are meant for. Is it COVID-19, uh, is COVID-19 included? So it's COVID-19, for, for, uh, it, it detects. Yes. So what we put there additionally was the human gene. It detects one um, one target in COVID-19, the usual type of people talk about, the ORF1. I don't know if you know about that. Mm. And then it also detects a human gene. One of the things we want to make sure is that the sample was well collected. So if a sample, something tests positive, but doesn't have that human gene, we doubt what is going on. Hmm. So we first, it detects the COVID and it detects a human gene to make sure you collected that sample from a human being. Right. Okay. So we, we, we had a funny situation where in a country they were saying that even Popo and some other things were testing positive. I don't know how true it was, <laughs> but all that gave us the idea. And we have some assays we are using that has that is a human gene we're detecting. Okay. So it helps you be sure that the sample was well collected. So even if someone is negative, the person is negative, not having COVID, mm -hmm. not because the sample was not well collected, okay. but the sample was well collected, you see the human gene, but the person does not have COVID. And that brings me to my next question, talking about status. We understand that you know this, the result comes out after 40 minutes. Uh, how, of what help is it in terms of detecting the status, whether negative or positive for an individual? It's, it's fast comparatively to um, the others we have available. Take, for instance, we have some people sending people all over to our office to come and do the COVID test. They are going for surgery. Mm -hmm. You can imagine some of them came in cassettes, came being carried, 
because they have to do these tests before they go for their surgeries. Now with this, the hospital can test. So the other part is that it gives our results qualitative, positive or negative. If you know how to evaluate, you can see the curves and you can look at them. One of the things we are trying to do, being a near point of care, it does not go as low as the routine PCR. Okay. Most routine PCR will detect one to 10 copies and will run for about 90, 120 minutes. Now this runs for 36 minutes and it can detect at least 100 copies of the DNA. So there will be some between that 100 copies down in minority. Test. We have tried and we have seen it can detect about 16, but it jumps some others. So we are li limiting it at 100, what we are sure it can detect. Okay. So that's currently what it is. So you can be able to pick people at risk and we can be able to take um, action immediately. All right. That, that's what we'll push forward a bit. Uh, I'll ask you about, you know, you said it's affordable, but before we go there, you talked about qualitative results. Uh, recently, you, you know mm. that for those who want to travel or who are coming, leaving the country or coming in, one of the requirements is the PCR results. I'm just wondering, whatever result that is generated from this process, is it would it suffice for the uh, COVID-19 certificate that is being asked of? Is it the same thing? So it's a molecular test um, and it can suffice, but this is not just a question whether it can suffice. It's about regulatory. You know, the NCDC, the authorities have to tell you, okay, this can be used. Oh. So it's a molecular test. It's not antigen, it's not antibody. It can pick it. Why I'm depending on not calling it PCR. PCR like, involves that you have to do cycling and all that different temperature. This runs at one temperature and detects the RNA of COVID. Mm -hmm. So it's a molecular test it's detecting the RNA of COVID. So, but it now has to be the authority that have to decide if this can be used at the center or not. Because if we have this, we can actually test uh, at the airport. Maybe while someone comes in, while they're going through, call, maybe someone can be collected. While they're going through customs and picking up their bag, maybe the result is already out. But you have to do about an hour, almost an hour because you extract the RNA if we use the, uh, what's it called, automated extraction, it can be very fast. They try the RNA and test. Say in, a, say in about an hour, we should be done. Hmm. All right. You, you also mentioned that the, this is cheaper. Uh, could you explain um, about the fact that, is it because it is done in Nigeria? Tell us, you know, how it is cheaper than the regular PCR. Okay. So the regular PCR um, has... Is, it has elements in it that will heat up the sample at some point and cool it down. It makes it expensive. But this one runs at one temperature. So it just needs to reach that temperature and maintain the sample at that temperature while the reaction is going on. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot cheaper. Now this, by the time we package it with the, um, the, the carry case that is padded to go to the field with the, um, with the power pack, it's about $9,500. Now, if you have two of that, you're able to test um, 32 samples, that's about 19,000. Compared to a PCR kit, if you're going to get a PCR kit that will do COVID, we are looking at about $75,000. Hmm. Some of them can go as low as maybe 50 to 100, but let's say just 75. So if you look at the equipment alone, that's a key gap. Currently, Lagos charges about 50,400 naira for this test. The price we are able to get this done right now is about $25. Now, that's because we bought things here and there. Mm. If we're able to go into it commercially, that price will come down a bit. And that uh, translates to about 11000 something. Wow. If you use 450 to um, change mm. it. So For you see, rate. on the part of the equipment, is cheaper. It's smaller. It can go anywhere. It can be powered. The power requirements are not much because it's not cycling. The power requirements are not much. Mm. And then the actual test itself, we put it uh, things together, is coming to at 25, uh, $25 compared to about 112 for um, test. currently what is going on now. Yeah. That, that, but we've not added that in $5, the price for the extraction, which may not be more than maybe $5 or thereabouts. So say $30 and then compared to $122, uh, $112, yeah, what the uh, 50 and 400 will um translate to if you uh, divided by 450 right. uh, uh, what naira to a dollar that's interesting uh, but are there plans to import this to other countries or first of all is it already uh, being used here so uh, we just finished this and that'll be the first thing i'll be discussing with my dg um this morning and this week mm -hmm. because there have been a lot of requests here and there um since we unveiled this on friday 
So we'll see how fast we can move up with it. And then some of the colleagues that also came during the unveiling asked us to also see if we can add another COVID gene. Currently, it detects just one. And the instrument I showed is like a three channel PCR machine can detect three things at once. Right. Think of it as colors. Mm -hmm. So maybe use this red to detect uh, COVID uh, one target A, use it under blue color to detect target B, and use it maybe yellow to detect the human gene. So we can add another COVID target and then we can be able to uh, improve how it does and then but, be but, able to get it out. But can this run out of stock or what's the plan for mass production? So we are hoping we can even establish it here in Nigeria. The, the regions for this can actually be made. Before the COVID, I was working on this for something else, for febrile illnesses. And I was about to go and also learn how to begin to make those regions mm -hmm. and for us to start making them here in Nigeria before COVID broke out. So it's, it's possible, that's why I said in the presentation, that within eight to 90% of the materials can be sourced locally. That would mean we have to have a small facility that can make diagnostic assays and we just begin to do that. And buy materials we need um, start up. The only thing I'm a bit skeptical about, we need to start making how to make it in Nigeria is the enzymes. That's the enzyme that translates the RNA to DNA, complementary DNA, before you start amplifying. Right. That's the part I'm not quite sure how we can get fully right now. Is immediately available in Nigeria, but we can't do something about it in the near future. So we actually went this route so that we are not in competition with others for the regions. Mm. If you want to buy commercially, we can buy it because they're available. It's not routinely we use anywhere for anything. We can buy them and we just appreciate them and push it into, uh, into the, uh, the, the space for, for use. And we can also, as we are doing that, begin to make them also here in Nigeria. Right. Because beyond this COVID, we have a program called the Diagnostic Asset Development Program. And we are working on a lot of other things that will just be wrong with beyond COVID. Thank you so very much, Dr. Chika Onwama, for this new intervention. I'm sure we'll call you again for more conversation on this as you progress. And do keep safe out there as well. Thank you. Do have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you.